gosh, I accidentally went into the void. Guys, we are heading towards a biome where a new version of the bloop is said to spawn. This one is supposed to be bigger, longer, and is said to be even more terrifying. We also have some news about Return of the Ancients, a game-changing mod that has been brought back to 2.0, and editors that allow you to mod the game yourself. So let's get started. Okay, there he is, there he is, I see him. Let's see what this thing can do to the beluga. Okay, he's going away, he's going away, come on. Gosh, look at those eyes. The bloop has always been, in my opinion, the most terrifying leviathan. I mean, just look at those sets of teeth. Alright, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, he doesn't really seem to show much interest in the beluga. Huge, it's huge. Warning, detecting large life form signature. Warning cannot be identified. <laughs> cannot be identified. Let's go today, and let's get a good look at this guy. Okay, now he looks a little bit longer. He's not quite as, not quite as short as the other one, but he definitely has a longer tail. Man, and his eyes have like a, they got a blue glow to him. The other one has more of a yellow glow. Are you no- Whoa! Oh, oh god! Oh, <laughs> that scared me to death. I did not think that that was gonna happen. Holy cow, guys, he- Okay, I had like, what, maybe- Oh, man, I didn't get to see the animation. Well, I died. I had about 30... I had like, what, maybe 50% on the health left, and he one-shotted? The beluga with mean, just one bite. That was insane. Okay, so what we're gonna do? Let's get out of here. Oh, oh yeah. There's. Uh, I forgot to. Sh <laughs> Wasn't quite sure if I was ready to show this or not. But this is my project, um, Cold Nautica. But we'll get to that in a minute. I'm using the structure edit editor to make those. Let's go into free cam mode, and we're going to check out this guy. And ah, oh, here we are. Here we are. Here is where we lost our summary. <laughs> Dang, look at that. He's just like hovering over it like, oh, look at my trophy. Look what I just destroyed. Like, look at this model. This is where, this is what I forgot to show on my last video, guys. This is where the glass is all broken. You can actually swim inside of it and get some of your stuff back. And apparently it's not sinking. I guess it just stays there. Oh, look at this guy. Oh my gosh, he has... No <laughs> he has four extra sets of teeth. Other the other one only had two. And this one has the blue glowing eyes, stretched out body. Wow. And he is let's okay, let's compare his size to a regular blue. Okay, so here is yeah, yeah, there's the size comparison. Wow. Good lord. That is like that's well over three three or four times bigger than that. He yeah, he can easily swallow that beluga in whole he could probably t swallow two of those things wow i wish i could get it to okay here we go we had to spawn him in the air so we could get a better look at his textures like wow th these are a little bit more and then we will spawn a regular bloop right next to him yeah he's definitely i think the fact that he has darker textures makes him so much creepier like this one has the eyes with the yellow glow, and then he's got the eyes with the blue glow. But look at this. He has the extra set of teeth. Man, that is creepy. Gosh. Yeah. So, all you have to do is go to Nexus, update your bloop mod. It'll be found under bloop and blaza, and you can have this super terrifying guy to add to your playthrough. Mick Jaw has blessed us with the return of the third-person view mod. Now, this is a mod that I specifically requested, and he was nice enough to put this in the game. So, there's a certain submersible that I would like to add as a mod, and it would just be a lot easier if it was in third-person. So, he put this in for me, 
and I'll show you guys how this works. Now, if you hold down C and the space bar, for me, that would be up and down. Then that kind of goes back to the regular first person mode. If you want to see like a scenic view, you hold it down for a few seconds and you can kind of activate sort of like a free cam, but you press it one more time, C and space bar, and then you can go back to this mode. Now let's try a, see what it's like. Ooh, I'm inside of it. <laughs> now sometimes there can be a few minor bugs where it's hard to target something because I'm not really able, not really able to, oh, there we go. Okay, well, it wasn't easy to get in there, but now I remember on the first version of that was on Legacy of this mod, I could not get the submersibles to work right. And only, or they would only go in one direction. I couldn't get it to function properly. He was nice enough to make it so that way you can pilot submersibles using this mod. So this is an entirely amazing new way to play the game. Download it, check it out. It just came out today. Third person view on Nexus. Now let me introduce you to two mods. The Epic Structure Loader and the Epic Structure Helper. Now with the loader, you can go in and you can download structures that other people have made and they will post them onto Nexus. And you can load those into your game and it will give you a completely new experience. They can place any prefab, any object, anywhere they want. They can make a custom map and it can offer a completely new gameplay experience. But the fun part is actually making it yourself. So check this out. with. When I press F4, this loads up the mod structure helper. And with this one, what I could do is I could I can edit an existing structure or I can create a new structure. So let's create a new structure. Now the structure mod folder name, you're gonna to want to put Epic Structure Loader. And then you can name the structure. We're gonna say test. Okay, now creating structure test for mod epic structure loader. So now what we can do is we can have a structure and I think it's pretty much a good idea to have a structure in one small vicinity and then you can create another structure folder if you want to move further out. At least that's how I do it. But let's say for example I wanted to add a rock to the game. So let's find a nice rock. Okay, there we go. We can take this rock, we click it, we can go to this translate button and we can move it anywhere we want. Weird how the reflections are seen on that, but anyways, it's easier if you go into free cam. It's, it's just a lot easier to do what it is you want to do without having to worry about swimming around. But I can click this, I can put it, place it anywhere I want, and then if I wanted to say, for example, I wanted to rotate it, can rotate it in any direction, but what if I wanted to have a bigger rock? Well, I can scale it. Ooh, <laughs> oh man, did I just knock my, <laughs> I just knocked my life pod down, and but I can, it doesn't stop there, I can make it skinny, I can make it wide, and let's see, let's go back with a little bit more of a, whoa, that's, that's looking freaky. Whoa, okay, that, that almost looks like a rock aurora. But anyways, we can set this anywhere we want. Dang, you can create your own land masses. And then if we wanted to, like say for example, place, let's, let's get this facing a good direction. Get it right here. Now, if we wanted to place a whole bunch of them that look similar all around it, what we would do is we would object we would pick it with the object, and then we go with the paintbrush. And then we can just add more rocks. Now it starts the rock off with what it looked like before. It doesn't copy the exact type of what we had. So copy this rock. We will highlight this. We will go back to our select, select that, and then we're going to go to duplicate or control D. And then it duplicated and it created another one. So then we can take that and we can move it over. Look at that. Wow. So the paint button pretty much just kind of duplicates what they look like originally. But if you want to duplicate the way that you made it, 
then we can just hit control D and we just made another one now look at this epic landmass we just made oh we can move up <laughs> wow I mean you can create an, an entirely custom map now the only thing about rocks are the hitbox on these is a little odd. Well, I guess I did put them a little low. So don't expect to be able to walk on them and make bases very easily because of the fact that we stretched out a small object. It might even have a weird collision. See, like I'm I'm not able to go further and it's it won't let me move and I'm not even anywhere near it. So yeah, if you want to build a custom landmass, you're probably better off going in with the terrain builder or terrain editor. But Let's say, for example, I wanted to make a custom biome. Now, that would actually be a lot easier. And I'll show you one biome, give you a little sneak peek of something I've been working on. This, I took the red grass biome because I feel like it, you know, it looks really plain. So, I'm taking some of the prefabs from the Lost River. I even, You can even set creatures. You can put them anywhere you want. So, say, for example, I wanted to put a ghost leviathan in here there we go okay now as long as you are in this particular file and the structure editor he's not going to move he will move once you are basically reloading the game and you're in you know survival but what we want to do is let's say for example selected him okay so let's make him smaller let's scale him down Oh, now we got us a baby ghost leviathan. <laughs> wow. So we could have a whole bunch of babies. Now, let's let's tr do a little bit of a test here. Let's see, can they hurt me? Oh, oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, he he definitely killed me. Um if this was a, if this was a reset playthrough, they would be moving around normally. And you can search all different prefabs. I mean, just anything you can imagine. Search it on here. Let's type in tree. Okay, so we got the membrane tree. So there, we just spawned in a membrane. <laughs> Sane in the membrane. Okay, so now we click on this. And if you want to customize this, let's make it, let's make it extra wide. Let's make it extra tall go this way a little bit look at that isn't that cool? that is going to be so get guys get creative with this download the epic structure loader and the mod structure helper now the helper is the one where you edit and the loader is just what you need to load the structures but yes download these get creative save your struct and then of course when you want to save you it's saving current structure and it saved that to where it belongs and then you can load those up on Nexus when you make something custom. And of course, I do plan to make a full tutorial how-to video on this particular mod, so that way we can go over all of the details. So changing textures in the game used to be extremely complicated. Now that we have something called the Texture Replacer Editor, it's gonna be so much easier on everyone. So let's say, for example, I wanna change the colors of this main plant. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press the middle button on my mouse, which is the scroll wheel button. Press that in, okay, and we get this window that pops up. So now the LODs, as some of you might know, uh, the LOD one would be what you see from far away. So you are going to want to change both of these, but the LOD zero is what we're going to focus on right now. That's close up. So, and, and of course, it's going to take a little bit of trial and error. You're going to have to kind of click through everything until you find exactly what changes the textures that you want to change. So if we click on Transform or Mesh Filter, nothing pops up. We click on Mesh Renderer. Now we get another window. Let's put this over here. Now this shows some colors here that we can change. Let's go to, look at that. Change that blue. Take the green away. Oh, now it's dark blue. Beautiful. So we can do whatever we want with this. And this is, I'm not sure what that one does. But let's open this up right here. Let's click this button right here. And we're going to get another pop-up window. Now, this is where the fun really comes in. You, you can tweak the spec intensity, which is the shininess of objects. You can even tweak the emission, which is the glowness, uh, the glow in, at night. You can tweak the spec color, the, 
the reflection color. But right now we're going to focus on the main text. And what you can do is if you want, if you wanted to go into another program, which like I use GIMP, for example, where you could actually save the PNG file of the existing texture. You can save that. And I already have one ready loaded up that I edited and I tweaked it myself. I added some ice textures to it and I put it in. And of course, all of your assets go into Bepinex plugins, texture replacer assets. Okay. And then I've got one. I called it uh, Ming, Ming plant. Okay. We open that up and immediately I've got ice textures on there. It looks like I might need to tweak it a little bit. It didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to. But let's, you know, let's have some fun with it. Let's go ahead and make it look a little bit different here. Let's change this up. Okay, we don't want purple because purple is what it already has. Green, no, that's, I'm going for more of a cold environment kind of look. Now, the spec color, I want it to be like a, like a light blue, like there's ice on it. Spec intensity, I can go up on that. The shininess, oh yeah, I want that all the way up. And then this kind of, uh, exactly, okay, I'm not exactly sure what that does, but there... There's all kinds of things. Illuminate, you want it to glow at night. There's so many different things you could do. So we, we made some changes. We want to save it. So let's go. Let's click this button right here. Now this is going to be your menu for saving. And we're going to name this uh, Ming Plant. And there are several different changes that you can make here. So if I wanted to go to the LOD. And here, let's go ahead and... Uh, Close that out. Let's go. Okay, the LOD one because we we want we don't want it to change back to the way that it looked when you look at it from a distance, right? So we're gonna go back over here, the LOD one, and then we're gonna do the same exact thing. We have main texture right here. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna load up Ming Plant, and then that changed. Okay, and so then. Well, I'm not going to worry about the colors too much on the, on the distance. You won't see that big of a di difference, but, but so we're going to do that. We're going to save that. And then we're going to do, we're going to call this Ming plant. And then we're going to go LOD because this one only had two different LODs. So we don't need to worry about LOD one, two, three, and four. So we've just got two different ones saved there. So these are all going, both of these changes that we made are going to save on the same JSON file. So we're going to click Save. And we're, it's important to make sure that this goes in the right spot. So this one goes Config, Texture Replacer, and then we're going to give it a name, Ming Plant. Just like that. Saved, and we're done. So next time that I load up my game, every Ming Plant that's, you know, maybe not these because they're smaller, that's a different prefab, but... Next time I open the game, every Ming plant of this size will look identical to this, and we immediately changed it. So that is a much simpler process than what we used to go through with tweaking the JSON files and going in and trying to do all that manually and 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 then closing the game, starting it back up, and closing the game, starting it back It was a very long process, very complicated, and... So before we move on, I want to point out there was a couple of bugs that we ran into or that I ran into where if you have the bloody life pods, Jason, and in your folder and you, um, you know, if you had the texture replacer editor in your game and you had it in the, all the older files in there, then that bloody Jason, bloody life pod Jason file will con cause a confliction. And it made all of my texture stop working. So just make sure you delete it because it's something something about it is is conflicting. And then also, if you are using Windows 11 uh, and you go to the the menu where you go to load up another PNG file onto your object, and then your game just freezes, I'm gonna leave a link in the description where uh, thanks to Indigo Coder, he was nice enough to sh to send me this link. It, it, ta it talks about how there's a possible corrupted file in Windows 11, and it, and it shows you how to delete it and basically reset that file uh, once you reboot Windows. So I'll leave a link in the description to, to fix that if your game is crashing due to this mod. We have some Return of the Ancients news that just came out. It's, it, re it reads here, it's been some time since we last shared any development news with the community, and we wanted to rectify that. Firstly, rest assured, 
Return of the Ancients is still very much in active development. We've been working hard these past couple of months to squash a lot of the remaining bugs from the 2.0 update as well as polishing the player's interactions with the Gargantuan Leviathan quite a bit, so it's more responsive and less repetitive. We're now in the process of developing the various remaining story elements to ensure the experience is a fun and engaging one. There's also a major surprise and some important news we have prepared for you all which we will be sharing more about in the near future. In the meantime, we'd like to show you a loyal and fierce little creature that we've been trying to catch with, Anthomnia, to bring to you all. And this, and then they kind of just go into detail about the gargantuan plushie that they are promoting. But, so anyways, let's break this down. They said, you know, they, they've gotten rid of the bugs with 2.0 and they, they worked on the interactions and they are working on the various remaining story elements. So I'm, I'm going to assume that probably means a few voice dialogues being recorded maybe even a cutscene or two, so that can still take some time. Now, I'm not going to speculate anymore on when this mod will come out. I have made some speculations, some predictions in the past that were were not accurate, and even Lee23 has given me some predictions that were not accurate. <laughs> so, uh, I don't think anyone really knows when this mod is going to come out, but I am still going to take a guess, and I, I'm going to say that I do believe that they are trying to push this out before Subnautica 2 uh, Early Access comes out. I really think that they are trying to push for that because we don't know exactly when Subnautica 2 Early Access is going to be coming out, but a lot of people do speculate that it'll come out at the early part of 2025, and that's just around the corner. So they have still like uh, four four months left to get this out, and I, I know that they would you know want to get this out so that way Subnautica 2 doesn't kind of overshadow uh, the work that they have put out. So this is what we have for now. So at least we are getting updates from them to know that it is not done yet, but it is closer and around the corner. And that is all for now, guys. There are still plenty of mods that I need to cover. There are full tutorial videos that I want to make for some of these editors. And of course, I have some projects of my own that I'm working on. So keep an eye out for those. I appreciate everyone that has supported me. I hope you're all having a great day. Peace out.